Millions tuned in to see England edged out in last night's World Cup semi-final, beaten 2-1 by the Americans in dramatic fashion. The dream may be over for Phil Neville's side, but this tournament has given the women's game on both sides of the border an unprecedented platform. So what comes next? Well, let's speak to former Scotland striker Julie Fleeting and the SNP MP Hannah Bardell, who currently fills that berth in the UK parliamentary team. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. And let's just get your view first of all. I mean, the tournament's not over, Julie, but on, on how it's been so far. I think it has been a fantastic spectacle of, of women's football. I think every single game has left us with talking points and there are just so many people now who have been impressed and it's maybe been their first taste of women's football, the first opportunity that they've, they've got and... The, the difference just this time round in the World Cup than even the Euros or, or World Cups gone past here in Scotland, um, it's been incredible and um, it's just so, so promising now for, for women's football going forward. And those many of those women who wouldn't have been household names previously, Hannah Bardell, now will be much better known so they can act as role models for, for young girls going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what you know what Julie says is spot on and you know a lot of this is built on the back of her success and her hard work and folk like her who played, worked full time jobs a lot of the time and we've got to remember that particularly in the Scotland team that was the case for many of those women and people like Erin Cuthbert uh, Megan Rappenhall who's you know shot to fame recently who've been challenging the, the President of the United States I mean they are uh, paving a way not just in sport but in equality as well And of course it's been controversial too Julie the, and last night's game was no exception in terms of VAR and uh, penalties missed and penalties retaken etc there needs to be not just, I suppose, for the women's game, but for, for football more generally going forward and ironing out of some of these issues. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're victims of the the VAR situation um, leaving the tournament. Um, the Scotland team, due to that, and England have almost been the same, just with them um, scoring and it being called offside, which, I mean, it was, but such a small margins that they're, they're calling VAR in for and... I mean, it has been exciting if you're a neutral, I have to say, but there are definitely many, many things that they will need to iron out, and I'm sure they will before they introduce it into the men's game. Yeah, Hannah Bardell, I wonder as a football fan what your thoughts are on VAR, having seen it operate at this level in this tournament, because, you know, a lot of people obviously called for its introduction because, you know, referees and other officials got things wrong, but does it kind of slightly spoil the, the enjoyment of the game? I think it has at points spoiled the enjoyment of the game. I mean, I've watched rugby for a long time and seen it used in rugby and we're used to it being used in rugby. But, you know, it's a very different sport to football. But I think it's unfortunate that the women's game has been used as a guinea pig. And I think at this level, that should have been thought through. I mean, Gemma Fay, I think, hit the nail on the head. She was like, I can't believe that these you know issues hadn't been ironed out. And, and it's going to be used differently in the men's game, is my understanding. And I think that that's unfortunate and I don't think that's fair. But, you know, we are where we are. And there has been moments when, you know, it has been devastating for teams, particularly for Scotland, as Julie said. You know, I, last night I was in Battersea Park with a bunch of England fans uh, and a few USA fans watching the match. And, you know, that, that was, whatever your views are, I mean, that was devastating to see them such marginal decisions that might have passed uh, under normal circumstances, but also the game be slowed down. You know, when Scotland lost its last, you know, sort of five or six minutes of its match because the referee couldn't tell the time and had spent so long on the VAR, mm. that really ruined it for a lot of people. Hopefully that won't turn people off. I think the commentary has been excellent. We've seen a lot of new female faces in the commentary teams and we've seen a different kind of commentary. I think it's been more inclusive. It's been more explanatory and there's been to be honest, less of the old cliches that we get sometimes in the men's game and more a uh, kind of commentary that brings people in and gives some of the, the factual stuff in the background of the players that's been quite different. Well, let's talk about where the game goes from here and how the game capitalises on this exposure that uh, women's football has had. Because, Julie Fleeting, we've talked a lot after major sporting events, you know, like the Commonwealth Games and the London Olympics and previous World Cups and even Andy Murray's success in tennis as well, about how you capture that moment and, and leave a legacy. And it's not always that easy. No, it's definitely not. And it, it hasn't been easy in women's sport. 
So I think now for we, listen, the national team have gone to the Euro tournament on a row. So we are seeing continued success for them. So that's exactly what we need. We need to continue to to be getting to tour, major tournaments and making sure because the the growth since the Euros has. Oh, our apologies. We seem to be having a wee bit of a glitch on the line there. Let me put that same question to Hannah Bardell because you know politics and and money comes into all of this as well. So how how does the sport capitalise on uh, on what has been a great tournament? I think we need to make sure that there is the broadcasting and print media coverage. Uh, academic Andrew Jenkin from the University of Strathclyde and Stirling has done some really interesting research he carried out between, I think, February and April this year, and he found that of all sports coverage, 65% of it was men's football and only 2%, 2.2% was women's football. And the total air time that women's sport got was 6.1%. That's just not good enough. And to be honest, it shouldn't take viewing figures of 6 million or so for the broadcasters and the media to realise that there is an audience out there for women's sport and women's football. But it has We've proven that that is the case. You know, the Scottish women have got to, you know, the first World Cup that any Scotland team have got to in 21 years. Now is the time for the media to get behind them. Uh, you know, the government, Scottish government, have supported a number of Scotland players to train full time, but government can't do everything. You know, it needs, the others need to come together. We need to see the media coming together. We need the corporate sponsorship, but that will come off the back of better airtime, better support uh, and better broadcasting. Not, I, I saw one guy on Twitter last night saying, right, now's the time to get more broadcasting. None of this red button nonsense. And I think that's spot on. Yeah, Julie, I mean, what's what's your view on, on, on that? I mean, obviously, the, is it a chicken and egg situation? The more exposure the game has, then the, 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 the bigger the following is likely to be. Yeah, I think absolutely. I mean, the, the fact that so many people are talking about it now is because it's there for them. It's on the TV. It's been in the paper. It's been in social media. So they, they haven't had an opportunity, really, to, to be able to watch games and, and see women's football just at that stage. So... Now, I think for us in the national team, we've had to watch our best players or certainly the majority of our best players leave the country in order to search for um, a profession in, in, in football and, and go to these professional teams and just to ensure that they can train every single day and, and play at the very highest level. And it's difficult in Scotland because even the men's game struggles in terms of finances. But in the women's game, we don't get... People coming to watch the game, we, we don't get them at the, the kind of grassroots level. and it, So it is difficult because we, we do want our players playing at the very highest level. And in order for them to do that at the moment, they, they have to leave and they go to England, they go to USA, Sweden. So we're seeing that just now, but you're kind of going, we want them to do that. But at the same time, we, we need something else to, to see our game grow here in Scotland. Well, let's hope that uh, the, the legacy is as we have described it. Thank you very, both very much for speaking to us this morning. Former Scotland striker Julie Fleeting.